Hey, thanks for tuning in. I hope everyone is well. This is the next video in the BF109 group build. In the last video, I wrapped up the first nine steps, which I thought went pretty well, considering it's my first plane build in decades. I spent a couple of weeks working on the next 14 steps after that. In case you missed it, there was a little mishap. It failed to pull out of a 20G nosedive over mahogany. Poor plane. So a replacement plane came, and after catching up to where I left off last, let's jump in on this one. I'll add the tail wheel later. For most of the parts, the runner was attached to the least visible side, or not visible at all. This was my first time using XF22. It's like a green-gray. It's the main interior structure color. I really like it. It thinned nicely and sprayed nicely. I tried to hit all those surfaces at once. Alright, time to cement the wing halves together. I've taped the wings in the center of where I'm going to apply the extra thin. If the cement hits the tape, it wicks up and onto the outer surfaces, trying to keep that to a minimum. I'm letting the extra thin hit the inside of the seam, then joining and working my way around the wing. I'm going to do the upper radiator flaps up, or straight out, on the right. That's the only semi-gloss black I use. I love it. The lower radiator flaps will be down, on the left. If down, you cut the middle tab off. If up, the two side tabs. This will make a nice opening to see the radiators.
I'm also doing the main flaps down to add visual interest. You slice off those two tabs and add that extra angled piece. the radiator and lower flap installation. I was test fitting the main flap there. I'm adding these in the open position. Before I do step 19, which is mating the wings and the fuselage, I'm going to get done as much as I can on the wings and do what I can do on the landing gear. Those skewers are aggressively long, I know. They were the same price as half the length ones. When I was making them, I thought, if Noel Coward had been a stoner, I should have used an enamel here, like chrome silver or aluminum. It's too grainy. I'll remove that and use a smoother finish. Getting this out of the way to add later, after the underside is painted. Even though I'm not going to be adding the drop tank, which you can't when the under cowling is open, I'm adding its attachment point for interest. It's coming slowly. <laughs> well, we got nearly another hour yet. Keep at it. <laughs> That was like take 23. I forgot to draw holes for the underwing cannons from the inside. Fortunately, I have the prototype. I can figure out where they go from the outside. Like most of the dual parts, they make indexing different, so you can't mix them up. I'm just showing here that the holes aren't the same on each wing. I was able to start here, as it was clear where the hole went, then measure the other one from there.
Okay, back to step 19. You slot it in there underneath, then swing the wings up. I'll take care of those seams. Fortunately, they're underneath. When I can, I like to let the extra thin wick in from the inside. And here we are. That's most of the structure. To me, it provides a terrific template cutout for the canopy windows. If you've worked with Tamiya masking tape, it's the same tape, just in a big square. I like the number three blade best for precision cuts. That took at least an hour. I think this is the armor plate behind the pilot. I need to paint that edge. The canopy will be open. Take a really thin wire, like 30 gauge, and dip it into CA glue. By gravity, it'll form a tiny bead at the end, and you can make really precise dots. I'm going to use the magnifying glass for this one. If you thin the satin black enough, when it hits the inner rim, it'll run around and basically paint itself. Then just paint the center.
This is what my view was in that glass. It's really convenient. It came with decals for the panel. It's not as easy to move them around on those raised dials. I added some Microsol, let it work for about 30 seconds, and then pressed it in with a bud. I used a little extra thin here as it was far away enough from the cockpit plastic. The instrument panel goes here on these ribs. I get so nervous because with the CA glue, you don't get much leeway. I'm skipping steps 27 and 28 for now. You only put all of this together if the cowling is going to be in the open position. It's not abundantly clear from the instructions. Those are the upper machine gun braces. I'll be detailing and weathering all this in the next video, and touching up some of those lines. When I can, I'll paint the straps or ridges first, then use a thinned paint to do the lower surface. You can wick the paint up to that edge, and it creates a clean demarcation. I gave that metal paint a second coat. I should also have painted that a smoother metallic finish. Oh well.
Touching up the RLM gray on the frame, I really like the way that paint flows. Since I'm doing a desert paint scheme, I'm going with the desert air intake. And I'm doing the open cowling option. I think that's the air filter intake on the inside of the cowling. Like the upper cowling, you can do the lower cowling open or closed. I'm doing open. I still have the completed under cowling from the prior plane and I'll just use that. You only make this if you're doing the open under cowling. And I still have the header manifold as well. That's the magnetic partner for the one under the engine. Much better. So this is everything left. The blades will get sprayed a black green and the hub satin black. I'm not sure yet where the RLM78 and RLM79 line will be, so I'm leaving this off for now. I'll mask and paint the cowling with the rest of the plane. These are the struts for the open cowling. The header manifold. It was an inverted V12. It snaps in with that magnet. The lower cowling that will be painted yellow on the outside. The engine, which I will attach after painting the plane. I'll prepare the exhausts in the next video. These go over the exhausts. I can't add this quite yet. You have to attach the landing gear first, then that goes on. I want to paint the outer side of the housing before final assembly. Just a couple of details for the rear wheel. That will go on after the RLM78 coat. I think most or all of this will be painted insignia white. I'll fill the wheel wells in with a sponge first before painting and tape up the engine post. The painting and weathering is coming up. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you're all well and happy modeling.